had just gotten home from work and was sitting back on the couch with a movie playing. It was storming outside, and it was Friday, so what better to do than stay up late and watch some TV? I had the window curtains open in case any lightning started up, hoping to catch some cool sights. It doesn't rain very often where I live, so nights like these are rare and always get me excited. But as the night went on, just about midnight, I noticed something outside my window across the street. There was a man walking down the sidewalk. He had no hood or coat on. He was completely soaked. He walked up to one of the houses and onto their porch. I couldn't see too much through the rain and dark, but it looked like he was waiting for them to open the door. After a minute, he walked down to the sidewalk again and continued further down the street. I couldn't see any further but seeing that gave me an uneasy feeling. At this time of night, and in this kind of weather, it just wasn't normal to be walking around and up to people's houses. I closed the curtains by the window just so that if, if he did come to my house, then he wouldn't see me inside and expect me to answer the door. But only 15 minutes passed before there was a sound outside my house. Someone was walking up my driveway and up to my front door, but there was no knock, and the doorbell didn't ring. I heard them moving around, walking across my porch and near one of the windows, then going back to the door. By now, I was really confused and wanted to look out, but was worried that they'd hear me. I waited, and after a minute, the sound stopped. I quietly walked up to the door and looked. It was the man I'd seen earlier. He was still there, standing at the edge of my porch, looking at the door with a blank face. I watched him for a few seconds before I got really creeped out and backed away. It was now that I started to think calling the police would be worth it, especially if he was going around to other people's houses and doing the same thing. I reached into my pocket to get my phone, but then there was the sound of footsteps departing. I looked out again, and he was gone. After giving it some thought, I felt that this was still too creepy to not inform the police about. Whatever that man was doing was not normal. I called and let them know about it. They said they would send an officer to patrol the neighborhood and see if they could get the man to stop or explain what he was doing. But that was about all that could be done at the time. I thanked them then hung up and checked out the door one more time before going back to the couch. The whole thing had really worn me out, taking away the relaxing night and just making me exhausted. I shut everything off and went upstairs to get in bed. But as I got in and turned off the lights, a thump sounded from downstairs. I sat up, and then it came again. It was loud, like someone smashing something against the wall. I got up and walked to the top of the stairs, and now hearing it for the third time, I realized it was at the front door. Someone was hitting something against it, like they were trying to forcefully break it down. I walked down a few steps and looked over, seeing the door violently shake every time they hit it. It looked like they were just a few hits away from breaking it down. Now absolutely terrified, I locked myself in the bedroom and called the police again. The operator said that an officer was in the neighborhood and would be here in just a minute. But through their voice, I heard wood shatter and the door slamming against the ground. Footsteps quickly moved downstairs, going into every room without stopping. Then they began moving up the stairs but were cut off by the officer pulling in and running up to the house. The intruder immediately stopped and ran for the back door. As the officer came in and yelled at him, Apparently, they had trouble getting the back door open in the heat of the moment, so the officer was able to get him down and arrested him. The man, who looked like a psycho up close, refused to say anything, not even a single word, before they drove him off. His intentions were clear, though. He was carrying a heavy hammer and had a bunch of zip ties in his pocket. That doesn't exactly sound like a coincidence considering what he was doing. Why he chose to go for my house isn't clear. Though, but what likely saved me was calling the police that first time. If I hadn't, the officer wouldn't have been in the neighborhood so close by and likely would have gotten here too late for me to have ever been seen again.
Nights in the winter are often dark and quiet. I used to be afraid of them when I was a kid, but as I started living alone in a house, they didn't bother me much. I started enjoying those quiet and dark nights alone at my house until one day something happened that still haunts me. It started on the night of the first rainstorm of the year. I came from my office late at night after working for 11 hours straight and just wanted to rest for the next few days. I took a shower, turned the heater on, and closed all the windows as it was too cold outside. I was off the next day for work, so I was just relaxing in my bed, watching a movie, and drinking hot coffee. As I took a sip from my coffee, I heard something hitting my window, which nearly gave me a heart attack. I looked at my window and saw the fresh mark of mud that had just splattered over the glass. I opened the window to look outside but I didn't see anything. But there was something unusual. I heard a creepy giggle of a kid so I thought that it might be just kids playing outside. I closed the window again and my attention shifted back to the movie. Not too long before a second pow at the window followed by the kid's laughter. <laughs> this time I ignored it, knowing that by giving the kid a reaction, they would keep going. Apparently, that worked because no more mud was thrown at my window that night. The next night, it was raining heavily again. The mud throwing started happening again, but with a greater and even horrifying intensity. This time while I was asleep, I woke up to a much louder and more ferocious bang at the window. I opened the window and leaned outside to see who it was. As it was raining a lot, I couldn't see too far out onto the lawn. However, I did hear that scary laugh of the kid again coming out of a dark corner. It sounded like a young boy's laughter. I yelled something out the window at him to warn the kid not to do it again. Luckily, it didn't happen again that night. The next day was a weekend, so I was home that day as well. I spent that whole day thinking about what had happened the night before. While sitting on the couch and thinking about it, I heard a knock on my door. I thought of it to be the delivery guy who came for a recent order of mine that I placed on Amazon. I ran towards the door and opened it, but there was no one outside. Just a creepy and dirty handmade doll covered in mud, sitting on my foot mat outside the door. I kicked it with anger onto the driveway. I was angry at whoever child was bothering me, but I didn't want to do anything aggressive as well. I went inside and later that day, while eating lunch I heard someone again, a kid's voice, talking to someone in my room. Again, it shook me to a level that I couldn't even move. I tilted myself slightly to have a vision of my room from where I was sitting, and from a slightly open door of my room, I could see someone running and playing inside my room. And after a moment, everything stopped. Suddenly, a kid's face appeared right at the slightly opened area of the door in my vision. The kid started giggling in the same creepy tone that I had heard from the past couple of days. I was so scared that I just sat there. I thought of it to be my hallucinations, so I sat in the lounge for a long time just to get over this incident. The darkness of the night and the quiet of the winter started sending shivers down my spine and the continuous fear of someone watching me was a terrifying thing to experience. I went to my room anyway, and no one was in here now. I tried to sleep. After turning off the light in my room, I couldn't sleep because of the fear that someone would again start hitting the window, and it would make me jump out of my skin again. This time I had lots of doubts in my mind, what if it wasn't a kid playing outside? And what if it was someone sneaking in on me or stalking me? Suddenly. Just like that. It happened again, something hit the window beside me with a loud thump followed by a gentle tap on the window. I was ready this time. I jumped out of bed and looked towards the window. As I looked at the window, I saw a small hand tapping on it. And when I stood up and opened the window to see outside, I saw a little kid who just stood there and said, hello, and he thanked me for letting him play inside the house. He then took off and I was confused as hell. I threw on my shoes and coat and ran outside to find him. As I got out, I saw the kid getting greeted by a woman two houses down the street. So I went over there and knocked on the house. The woman opened and I told her what happened the past few days. She apologized and told me that her son, 
who apparently was the kid terrorizing me, had hard times finding friends, but he had been out playing by himself and getting to know the neighborhood since they just moved in a few weeks ago. She said it wouldn't happen again, and thank God it didn't. I lived alone in a small house in a small community with a couple of dozen houses in the area, but it's a few miles away from town. I'd been living in that same house for about four years, and for the most part, I hadn't had any issues. I liked not being in a busy area and just having trees surrounding the community. I worked a normal 9 to 5 job and lived a normal life until everything took a tragic turn after a horrifying incident that changed me completely. This all happened last year by the end of July. It was raining for a whole day when I went to work, and it was still raining when I got back home. I got home, opened my umbrella, and collected all the stuff from the yard, including my mowing equipment to save them from rain. I was holding an umbrella in one hand and had equipment in the other. While placing it in the shed I noticed someone standing on the other side of the road below a flickering streetlight. The man was standing still and seemed like a shadowy figure. I got afraid to look at him and yelled at him to go away, but he didn't listen. I decided to ignore him and headed inside, dropped my bag on the kitchen chair, and then started searching through the pantry for something to eat for dinner. As I looked through the shelves, though, I noticed something odd. The box of cereal I had for breakfast wasn't where I remembered putting it. Actually, it wasn't anywhere at all. I looked around the kitchen for a minute, just confused and thinking that I was losing my mind. I got frustrated after a bit and gave up, making a quick dinner and trying to enjoy the rest of the night. At midnight, my eyes were getting heavy, so I turned off the TV and stumbled into the kitchen to fill up my water bottle before bed. Then I went over to the back door to turn off the back porch lights. But just before I switched them off, I saw something far back at the edge of the yard. I saw that same figure standing among the trees just past the reach of the lights. I had no way to get a closer look, so I just stood there looking at him for a few seconds until I saw him walk away deeper into the forest. It was really strange and gave me chills, but I wasn't sure what exactly even happened. I was more confused than anything. I switched the lights off and went to bed. In the morning, I got ready for work again and went downstairs. But when I opened the pantry, the box of cereal was there right on the shelf, the one that I thought had been missing. It was sitting right where I'd left it. I figured I just missed it somehow and quickly ate before heading to work. As I stepped outside to go to work, I noticed strange footsteps just outside my house. I didn't want to leave my house just like that, but I needed to get to work. It was still raining and dark outside. I held my umbrella and started walking away. As I was about to walk away, I turned back to look at my house, and what I saw there shook me to the grounds. The lights inside my house was turned on, and the man from yesterday was standing inside my house, behind the window. I got freaked out and ran inside the house. As soon as I stepped through the door, I started hearing mysterious footsteps all over my house as if someone was running away from me. I froze at a point and called out if anyone was there in the house, but there was no response. It was quiet again. I stepped slowly to the entryway of the living room and scanned the room. I took a few more steps in and walked carefully through, checking behind everything. There was nothing and no one. I went back by the front door, preparing to check upstairs when I heard sudden footsteps shuffling through the kitchen. I turned my head and looked down the hallway. A man was standing at the far end, looking at me. He was old, wearing torn clothes. His hair was all messed up, looking straight at me with his eyes wide open, not blinking them for even a second. It was like my brain and body just shut down for a second as we stared at each other. I spun around and swung open the front door. I heard his footsteps coming up behind me as I sprinted out of the house and ran all the way to my neighbor's house. They called the police for me and let me stay with them until they arrived. Police found no sign of intrusion, but they found some disturbing evidence of someone likely spending hours inside my house, eating my food and everything. He had been living in the attic. 
There was no way to tell how long it had been going on. After that, I put my house up for sale and stayed with some relatives until I was able to move. I don't know if that man was harmful or if he was just living in my house because he could, but I could never shake the sight of him standing at the end of my hallway, staring at me with those dead eyes.